Hospital workers of Reddit. What was the dumbest thing you saw a patient do immediately after leaving? I work in medical imaging where patients have to drink oral contrast for their exam. Some folks really hate the stuff and one patient after being given the oral contrast went outside and dumped it in the bushes and came back in and said that they had drank it. Our front desk lady actually saw her dump it in the bushes and told us about it but we would have seen the lack of contrast in the image even if she hadn't told us. I talked to the patient and was like we can see inside of you, we can tell if you drank it or not. I work for a medical device company that makes bone screws. We had a patient see us for 40 implants. Apparently his screws broke less than a month after surgery. But this is a big deal, and not just from a financial standpoint. So of course we launched a full investigation. Turns out the dumb boss decided to play tackle football less than a month after his major back surgery. Our bone screws are strong, but not tackle football strong. His case was thrown out. When I was a nursing student I did a rotation on a transitional care unit in my first year of school, where people go to wait for a nursing home placement. Had an older man as a client who did not have any cognitive impairment complain about abrasions on his penis. Okay all is well and I call for a doctor to look at it to get some antibiotic ointment for it. The doctor can't come up to our floor for another few hours. I tell the patient this and leave to go do something else. About half an hour later it's time to go take his blood sugar and guess what I find the man doing? Jerking off in plain sight and his hand and penis are bloody and raw. I literally had to have a conversation with a man my grandfather's age and have to tell him not to masturbate while the abrasions are healing and to take it easier once it was healed. Talk about burning the bloody rubber. That dude really loves his egg roll. Discharged a patient after hysterectomy, removing uterus stitches at top of vagina and she went home and had sex busting her stitches and allowing for her bowel to protrude through the vagina had to have an emergency procedure to fix it ah and that's enough for this thread not after leaving but this older gentleman had his wife bring him an l out the literal day after his open heart surgery i couldn't believe it now retired but one of the things i liked about my hospital was the food we have a lot of immigrants in our area and some wise person decided to hire a pretty diverse crowd of cooks. Jamaican ladies making spicy chicken, Japanese cooks making sushi, Mexican dudes making made to order burritos, local barbecue, etc. And it was all very clean from a nutritional viewpoint. All of it was inspected by our RDs. And just about every day I would see patients turn down this excellent food and have their families bring them crap from fast food joints in town. Being in a hospital is strange and fast food is familiar. You had me at jerk chicken though. I feel like I am that person. When I was 15 I broke my arm. Went to the hospital got a cast went about for a few weeks and got it removed. Great. I have my arm back. Now I wasn't the brightest kid and needed everything explained to me. No one told me not to have an arm wrestle with my fresh out of cast arm. No one explained it was still healing. 4 hours after having my cast removed I was back in A&E and getting a new x-ray and then a new cast put on by the same nurse who just took it off. I have never seen such disappointment in the eyes of someone who wasn't my mother. Your last sentence is priceless. Countless COPD asthmatics coming in for wheezing, sob, rapid breathing. We treat them and the second they feel better they will state, I forgot something in my car, only to leave and light up a cig. A lady came to Ira for tachycardia and anxiety. The Tridge nurse, on a hunch, asked what she'd eaten that day and if she'd had any coffee. I haven't had time to eat. This now being mid-afternoon and only 4 or 5 cups of coffee. Genuinely clueless. Not a hospital worker but I was in the emergency room due to a sports related injury. Finally got let out after hours of x-rays and examinations as I was learning how to use crutches and watched someone with stitches on his arm start stretching like he was going to run all the way home. He turned around, walked towards the desk and yelled your nurse is a crap after the cut on his arm reopened mid stretch. The woman at the desk looked so tired. Somebody lit up a cigarette, in a no smoking area, with a nasal cannula on, and lit their face on fire, had to come right back into the air. Suru men are smokers with cannula omg, always outside the main entrance puffing away beside their O2 tank, Jesus take the wheel. 
Guy was discharged from our emergency room and wanted a cab voucher to get downtown. We wouldn't give him one because he didn't meet our requirements. He walked outside, called 911, and told the ambulance to take him to a hospital downtown. I had a PT who left AMA that called 911 from our main entrance. They refused to pick her up and asked her to go to our ED. Go out to the car park, meet their dealer in a car, and shoot up through their IV cannula, then saunter back into their room as if we couldn't tell. That's why more and more hospitals won't let patients leave the floor, it's a huge liability, not to mention when doctors come to see the patient, they may not be in the room. In the Darwin Awards is a tale of a man in hospital with a skin problem. The staff coated him all over with a cream which is highly flammable, warned him about it and told him to keep away from any sources of ignition. He immediately snuck outside for a smoke, went up like a Roman candle. Not a doctor but, I knew someone that is a fitness freak to an obnoxious level. She had a medical emergency, intestinal blockage, one day that involved major abdominal surgery and removal of part of her intestine. The day she was released from the hospital, she went back to her insane workout routine, trying to make up for the muscle she lost. She claims her doctor told her she could, her intestines ripped open, she barely survived. She still claimed after the fact that her working out had absolutely nothing to do with her body ripping open and it was just bad luck. Overexercising can be a form of eating disorder body dysphoria. She should get help. Inject H into their PICC line. Big IV. Leave to go smoke a cigarette and get hit by car. Steal from a 7-Eleven while in a hospital gown. Escape from the air and steal an ambulance. How do you manage to steal an ambulance? Patient came in for shortness of breath. She was seen and discharged. A nurse saw her walk into the parking lot, jab herself in the leg with an epipen, and come right back in saying that she's short of breath. That's not dumb. That's a mentally ill patient. My brother works as a volunteer for the Red Cross. He mostly volunteers as a medic in ambulances. He told me how they picked up a guy because he crashed his bike after he didn't pay attention and got his tire stuck in some tram tracks. About 3 hours later he was picked up again after he tried to ride his bike with one hand in a cast. First time round he sprained his elbow, second time round he broke his shoulder on the same side. Well, he didn't disable himself on both sides, there is that as a silver lining. I don't work at a hospital but off the top of my head. One. The patient who refused to get in an ambulance when he was having a heart attack until we let him have a cigarette. 2. The patient who while having a stroke insisted he was fine and was just going to go home and nap. We got his niece to come and bring him to the ED. 3. The patient who insisted he knew his body and was able to frighten his paralyzed limbs into working correctly and that was why he did not need an ambulance to go to the hospital for the stroke he was currently having. His limbs were paralyzed because of his first severe stroke. This was his second. 4. The parents who when their infant had trouble breathing gave him a lot of milk to drink and laid him down. Kid was fine but these people were clueless. I have way more can you believe the patient did that? Stories but these were the ones I saw myself. As requested more crazy patient stories. 1. The IV drug user who refused free vaccines cause they didn't want unsafe substances in their body. 2. The addict who wanted to know the safest way to use C because their dealer kept mixing C with H. We told this patient there is not a medically recommended safe way to use C. This person just decided to switch dealers. 3. The person who knowingly let, and I do not use the word let lightly, her child be sexually abused complained that we made their child sick and were not providing sufficient care for their child's reoccurring nightmares and depression. 4. The patient who had tumor grow to the size of a watermelon before they sought treatment. This person is actually doing really well now and last I checked expected to make full recovery. 5. The mother who was convinced her kid had hearing issues. Kids hearing work just fine they just ignored their mom. 6. The patient convinced they had memory loss. They didn't. They did have 4 kids under 5 and a newborn though. 7. The patient who was frustrated that his 7 year old was obese and not losing weight despite the fact he kept buying her junk food. 8. The patient convinced we were going to hurt him during specific minor surgical procedure needed to diagnose his health problems and just screamed that at us at different visits. 
we have never forced him to get that procedure nor do we provide it on site. 9. The patient, who was very very poor with no real assets, who refused to speak about DNRs and her will while I was in the room. The only patient who has ever refused to speak in front of me. I think she thought I was trying to steal from her. IDK I'm just basic stuff. 10. The patient who called me cute. He was completely blind in one eye. To date he is the only patient that has ever called me cute. I am a regressively average looking person I just find this story funny. Not a hospital worker, but my grandfather's wife tried to sneak KFC into the hospital for him immediately after triple bypass surgery. I am in IT and was working an overnight shift in the emergency room supporting a new software rollout. A dude was brought in because he had drunkenly stumbled out in front of a car and got hit. When my shift ended around 11am I went to a little Irish pub down the street to have a beer and some lunch before I headed home to get some sleep and lo and behold guys who is in there drinking again. Yep same dude from the O was already drinking whiskey again just hours after being released from the hospital with a broken arm and a few other injuries. This is just sad. Had a guy in his 20s come in with it be from a car accident. Decided to discharge against medical advice. Showed up the very next day after attempting to back out of his driveway and slammed into his girlfriend's car. I work in a covered clinic and I had a patient come in who was just a ball of anxiety about all sorts of things but mainly covered. He had no symptoms either, just general anxiety. Anyway, he walked out of the clinic immediately took off his mask and went into the jimmy johns across the street seriously you come to specifically talk about your fears of covid and then you take off your mask before going into a store why i i i i on my ob rotation in med school we had a 32 week pregnant woman with cardiomyopathy heart failure like condition and an ejection fraction of 15 percent bad She's impatient until delivery and everyone's worried she will die during or after delivery. One night a unit clerk calls and asks the nurse on duty. Have you all seen Ms. X tonight? The nurse says. She's in her room I assume. The clerk then says. Well that's weird because I'm looking at her eating a funnel cake at the state fair right now. The patient just decided she needed a break from all of this hospital life. Okay this was me, I had finished a sleep study, as to which I barely slept and had to redo it. I was 6am and I was leaving the hospital. I walked into a glass wall, which was clearly a wall, it even had the visibility stickers on it, twice. Twice I bounced off the same wall in my attempt to leave the hospital. Sleep depravity is a blol. A dentist had to put a little boy maybe 3 under general anesthesia to treat his bad teeth. Everything went fine until he was about to leave and I saw his mom getting him Gatorade. Turns out it was his favorite drink and it was, almost, all he was drinking. The parents thought it was a fruit juice and that it was okay for him to drink. No wonder he had so much problems with his teeth. Poor little guy. Patient obese enough to be in a wheelchair, went outside for a smoke. Cigarette in one hand, inhaler in the other. One puff of the cigarette, one puff of the inhaler. Inhalers are often used for bronchial dilation. I imagine that would increase the effects of smoking. Mind you, I'm not saying it's a good thing. I just recognize how it might work. This doesn't fit super well. But I once had a patient who insisted on leaving the hospital. Discharge against medical advice. Because it's hard to get a good night's sleep. Now, I will admit, hospital is not the quietest place at night. You have doctors going around checking on sick patients, machines beeping etc. But they are there for a reason. We could not convince him to stay. So we turned to his wife. His wife said she agreed with us. But she can't change his mind. He died the next day. It was a very treatable condition. Serious, but he had a good chance of recovery if he stayed. I guess he got a good sleep after all. Holy crap that was darker than I thought. I'm a pharmacist, and one of our patients has been coming in to get nicotine chewing gum regularly for at least 5 years now. Problematic in itself, I know. This time he really wanted to quit, so he asked about nicotine patches, but decided they were too expensive. As I was walking home from work minutes later, he rode past me on his bike with a lit cigarette in his mouth. We had an angry drunk that came via ambulance from a city about 30 minutes away. 
he left AMA, walked to the nearest motel, used their phone, and then called 911 hoping to be taken back to his city, but he ended up back in our ED. Needless to say he left AMA again a few minutes later. When I was working in the hospital I had a patient who had a central line which is an intravenous line into a large vessel in his chest. He went in a wheelchair with a friend of his to the parking lot where his friend injected his central line with H. He overdosed his friend pushed him into the elevator on the wheelchair and left him there. He was found in the elevator unresponsive. He was successfully resuscitated so that he could return to his life of substance abuse. They don't always wait until they're out of the doors to do something stupid. They'll have their friends sneak in drugs and shoot up on their bed. Addiction is a disease after all. When my sister was about 3 she refused to leave somewhere. Can't remember and my parents were holding her and and my sister went limp and popped her elbow out of place so they took her to the hospital and they fixed it. I crap you not. I'm not lying. They second they opened the door and stepped outside she was already throwing a fit and went limp again the second they walked out and popped her wrist. So they had to walk back inside and get it checked and while the nurse was trying to get her to sit still he accidentally popped out back. And then they investigated your parents for being abusive lol. Not a hospital worker but when I was 5 I was visiting my grandpa in the hospital and when we left, I was walking backwards talking to my mom. I turned around and smacked my head against a parking sign. Had to immediately go back into the hospital to ask for some ice. I imagine the nurses watching got a laugh out of that one. My mom sure did. I know someone who fell and broke the bone above the eye by hitting the door handle. When her mother and brother were visiting her in the hospital, she shared the entire experience in great detail, which led to her brother feeling uneasy. He tried to leave the room but fainted, hit the door handle and broke the bone above the eye. I work as a respiratory therapist so part of my job is to manage ventilated patients. Often I'll have patients who are in due to drug or alcohol overdose. I remember one patient who had been intubated because they were found unconscious in their own vomit. We had the person for about 2 weeks intubated to protect their airway while they detoxed. Long story short they finished detoxing, left AMA, against medical advice, went home and same day pounded a 2L bottle of vodka, vomited, aspirated and was found 45 minutes after and suffered an anoxic brain injury. They were back in the IQ same day intubated again and if they're still alive it's not without massive mental deficits. Happens often people go through the whole detox cycle just to repeat the same mistakes. When I went through bariatric class, the instructor told a story of someone who, after surgery, ate a burrito on the way home from the hospital, they had to have another emergency surgery to fix the damage. Had a mom in the angry that we hadn't gotten to her daughter yet, minor injury, already tridged and needed to wait for others with serious issues. She got so mad that she left with her kid, stood outside our entrance and called 911. But the ambulance came about 10-15 minutes after it would have been their turn on to be seen. Would have been a grand total of 30 minute wait to see our doc. Had them take the kid to another hospital instead. Way to go, mom of the year. Had a patient get an extensive and free to him surgery to fix the arm he messed up by injecting him into it. He was motivated to stay clean since he went through such a big procedure. He had to wait an extra 2 hours for discharge on his day to go home. Got pee. Had a full on meltdown. Said he was going to go home and get fricked up. He didn't want to stay clean anymore. Came back to the ED that night drunk as a skunk. Well at least he stayed off the end that night. Presumably. Not me. But a former co-worker had a patient who snuck out to puff a crack pipe in the parking lot mid-visit while they were busy with another patient. Got to the hospital with a heart attack. Decided to start a healthy life the next morning. Died in a hospital yard doing workout. That's sad colon. I had a patient leave AMA one night at 2am. He said he was walking home. He signed the papers and left. I was busy so I didn't get around to the computer documentation and discharging from the system. About 2 hours later the ear called the floor and asked if we had had a patient by a certain name. I told her he had left AMA. Turns out he walked a few blocks and realized he couldn't go on and called an ambulance. Since he was never officially discharged he just came back to the floor and went back to bed. 
My granddad was this person. We had a family reunion trip to Cancun, Mexico in 2015 if I recall correctly. One of the days we were there, we took a day trip to a cenote, deep freshwater lake, and did some touristy things. One of said touristy things was a 30 feet cliff dive where you could get your picture taken as you leapt into the water. My grandfather wanted to do it, as it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. He failed to tell us this before he did, and it wouldn't have been so bad if he hadn't had a quadruple bypass surgery just weeks before. He did a fat belly flop, it was admittedly pretty badass. As soon as he bobbed to the surface and doggy paddled ashore, his wife yelled at him on end while our poor, confused Spanish speaking tour guide paced around nervously. Grandfather was perfectly fine, but he wasn't allowed to go swimming for the rest of the day. I had a patient that had surgery to remove her intestinal polyps, then went out and drank a bunch of liquor and began him or hitting blood. Customary not a hospital worker, but my grandpa ranks up there in dumb crap. He was in the hospital for lung cancer, ended up being on oxygen, and would stay on oxygen the rest of his life. As soon as he left the hospital, he pulled down his mask, lit up a cigarette, and started smoking. Personally, I think that this says more about how addictive nicotine is versus how dumb your grandpa is. You'd think he'd stop using the thing that's actively killing him but addiction is a strong pull. We used to have this young guy come in frequently for diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA. For those not in the know, DKA typically occurs with type 1 diabetics when their blood sugar, for whatever reason, goes out of control, triggering a chain reaction in the body that, if left untreated, is fatal. Every time this guy came in, he was extremely sick and practically knocking on death's door, and he would do this every couple of months. One night. I headed into work but stopped at the lobby's Tim Hortons to grab a coffee. Ahead of me in line, I see that same guy. Our eyes meet so I say, hey, they let you out today, as I knew he had been admitted to my unit over the last few days. Yeah he says excitedly. Then he goes up to the counter and orders a sugary donut. He literally chows down on it as he leaves and waves goodbye at me. In my head, I'm sighing and thinking, see you soon. We haven't seen him in a long time, though, so I assume he's been doing better with his blood sugar control nowadays. Either he is doing better, or a lot worse. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.